obvious show of a blessing, gracious reviving hugging of all the hills and the valleys, sound of abundance of rain, child blessing, showers of blessing we need, mercy drops flow. Oh, so melody. 
Let us pray together. Dear God, thank you for your presence. Thank you for your guidance and this opportunity to worship you. Come, send the Holy Spirit to all of us and feel the Spirit. And let us praise and let us worship you, Lord. And we are open our hearts to you. We are open our ears to hear your words. And bless the pastor Kim when he preaches and his family. And bless the church to expand the kingdom of God through us and through all the people who come in. Thank you for you know, the things you gave to us. We pray in your name. Amen. 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 <laughs> Today we have a you know, pastor Kim will preach for you. Special. I'd like to uh, share the Word of God with you, uh, Book of Romans, chapter 5, uh, verses 1 through 8. I'm going to read this to you, okay? Please open Book of Romans, chapter 5, verses 1 through 8. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have a peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have obtained our introduction to faith into this grace in which we stand, and we exult in the hope of the glory of God. And not only this, but we also exult in our tribulations, knowing that tribulation brings about perseverance, and perseverance, proven character, and proven character, hope. And hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit who was given to us. For while we were still helpless, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly, for one will hardly die for a righteous man, though perhaps for the good man someone would dare even to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. Amen. Last week, I gave a message about
the fact that uh, God has planned for us. So we need to live a purpose-driven life. When we believe that Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior, we were justified by faith. God declared us to be righteous by His grace. As a result, we began to have a peace with God, as verse 1 said here. This peace is shalom in Hebrew. Uh, it has a, a deeper meaning. This peace does mean merely the absence of a conflict or turmoil. Rather, it has a notion of a positive, positive blessings, especially in terms of a right relationship with God. When you have a proper relationship with God, then all is well. That doesn't mean that you're going to be rich materially. That doesn't mean that you're going to be you know, happy and uh, you're going to have a long, healthy life. Rather, when you have a proper relationship with God, God will be with you. God will guide your life. God will protect you, and God will meet all the needs. Another result of being justified by God is that we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Verse 2 said here, Rejoicing in the hope of the glory of God means Christians' anticipation of the blessed life in heaven. Believers will have the glory of God in heaven after we die in this world. Let us look at our past life. We are justified by God's grace through our faith. We have a proper legal standing before God. What about our present state? We have a peace with God. This peace, as mentioned, is not dependent on our external circumstances or our external situations. It comes from our right relationship with God. I hope all of you have that kind of peace in your heart. What about our future state? We will have the glory of God in heaven. As we age, we think more about our death on earth and we anticipate the life in heaven. You know. Having a life in heaven means so much to us, especially those who are mourning in grief, sorrows, because of the lost ones. But heavenly life comforts us even when we lost our beloved ones because they are in heaven, you know. That truth, that fact really comforts us and gives us the hope that we will meet them in heaven, you know. This is the hope of glory that the Apostle Paul is talking about here. And not only this, but we also rejoice in our tribulations, knowing that the tribulation brings about perseverance. Now, Apostle Paul is talking about that our challenging life on earth. Tribulation means definitely suffering, pain. We have been suffering from various 
causes such as financial problems, various sicknesses, loss of loved ones. Sometimes we have problems with accidents, unexpected ones, and etc. Actually, human nature doesn't want to suffer. We want comfort, right? Yes. We want to be content. Actually, no one wants to suffer. In fact, Psalm 13, 1 through 3, this psalmist experienced the agonies, the sufferings, thus. Verse 1 says here, How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will hide your face from me? How long must I take counsel in my soul and have a sorrow in my heart all the way? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Here the enemy refers to those who hate us or who hate this psalmist. Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Light up my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. This psalm begins with a question, how long? You know, it repeated four times. The question is not asking for information, but expressing the desperate and painful situations in, he, in which he cannot endure any longer. However, the word of God, today's passage, verse 4, clearly says that the suffering produces endurance. Endurance is patience, you know. Patience is one of the nine fruits of Holy Spirit that God wants us to have. And this endurance produces proven character. And proven character produces hope. Here we have a hope again, you know. Hence, we should rejoice not only in future glory in heaven that we are going to inherit after we die on earth, but also in present trials and sufferings, not because they are pleasant, but because they produce a step-by-step -step transformation that makes us more like Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. The purpose of our life on earth, as Romans chapter 8 verse 29 says, is to be conformed to the image of our Lord Jesus Christ. See, that is why the value system of this world is totally different from God's value system. God wants us to be like Jesus. That was the purpose of His creating us in His own image. Here in verse 5, hope as a result of having a proven character is God's promise of a glory in heaven. And the reason why this hope does not disappoint us is that God has poured out His love into our hearts. Verse 5 says here, And this love is poured out by the Holy Spirit, whom God has given us. I'm sure most of you experience this love of God, huh? Haven't you experienced this love of God? When you experience the love of God, you cry, huh? You're touched by the hand of the Holy Spirit. Wow. 
God loves me so much. You know, although I'm like a wretch. You know? God's abundant life in the believers' hearts encourage them on in their hope. Having mentioned the pouring out of God's love, Apostle Paul described the character of God's love from verses 6 through 8. God demonstrated His love toward us by the death of His Son, Jesus Christ. You know, first of all, verse 6 says here, For while we were still helpless at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. When I was uh, doing missionary work in Peru, in South America, you know, that is the place where Inca civilization started. Those Incan believed the sun as their god. And every year, they offer virgin, you know, uh, lady or uh, children the most precious ones you know became sacrifices they had to die in order to appease their God son God but our God is the loving God. Although we turned our backs against Him, He came forward, reached out His hand, and grabbed us through our Lord Jesus Christ by sacrificing His own begotten Son, the most precious one for Him. What a love! Although we deserve to die, you know, he loved so much. The Bible says here, even though we were weak, helpless, ungodly, Christ died for us. Secondly, verse 8 says here, God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. In spite of the fact that we were sinners, God loved us so much that Christ died for us. People, some people maybe are willing to die for the righteous ones but hardly for the sinners or ungodly people. But God, as a creator, to save creatures, sacrificed his own son, Jesus Christ, to save us. Because of this love, we can have unshakable hope in the Lord. You know? Because from past, we were justified. In present life, we have a peace with God. That means we have a right relationship with God, and we are receiving blessings, His grace, day in and day out. And in the future, yes, we will anticipate the glory in heaven. We are going to become co-heirs with our Lord Jesus Christ because we became a children of God. Praise the Lord. That is why, you know, we can, we should have unshakable hope 
every day of our lives. Amen. Amen. Yes. It doesn't matter whether you are poor or whether you are sick. I am poor, man. We are poor. My family is poor. You know what? We receive food stamps from the government. And yet, that doesn't deter us from having a hope on earth. It could be part of our tribulations, suffering, but that suffering will produce us perseverance. The endurance will prove, produce us the proven character. The proven character will again and again, more and more, the hope of the glory of God in heaven. Praise the Lord. See? So even suffering on earth will point us toward the heavenly glory that we are going to have in the end. Praise the Lord. That is why we can have unshakable hope in the Lord. Praise the Lord for loving us and giving us peace and also giving us unshakable hope. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for blessing us, Lord. We are justified by faith of our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, Father God, that is why we have a peace in our heart. Because we have a right relationship with you. Oh, Father God, thank you for giving us unshakable hope. The hope of the glorious life after this life, Lord. In heaven, Lord, forever. As your children and as a co heirs with Jesus Christ, Lord. Oh, Father God, thank you for blessing us. I pray for your guidance, protection, Lord, unto each and every one of us here, Lord. And I pray for the fulfillment of the plan that you have for each and every one of us here, Lord, that we may be like Jesus and we may live in accordance with your will, Lord, with thanksgiving. Bless each and every one of us continually, Lord. We praise you and we honor your name. We thank you again. And I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.